Thank you very much. As Adam pointed out earlier, the pun in the title, talking about the Steam Deck, I opened up all your valves. He's going to kill me later. I'm already at half-life. OK. <laughs> Who here has heard of the Steam Deck by show of hands? Right, so my talk is explicitly for that one guy there. Um, so I will make eye contact and ask you about it afterwards. OK. So what's my talk going to be about? Quick overview. I'm going to talk through the device, the setup, and how KD integrates with all of this. I'm going to talk about what we've been working on as contractors. And I'm going to give some big thoughts on how, what this means for KD and everyone. And then I'm going to leave a lot of time for questions because I like seeing Adam run around. So what is a Steam Deck? This device here. And you can see this lady is using it to play video games. It's a games console, a handheld game console. This lady is playing a game while mindlessly wandering into traffic. This lady is playing a game while mindlessly wandering into traffic. Um, to be clear, I'm not an official Valve spokesperson. You can use it without wandering into traffic. It's, but it's a games console. But what makes it interesting is it's a Linux console. It's a Linux device under the hood. So out of the box, what does it do? Well, it boots into this very, 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 very minimal desktop, Linux desktop environment called Gamescope. And Gamescope has one job, which is show a single full screen window as fast as possible. And it is very, very, very good at that one job. It's rubbish at anything else. Very narrow target. So it's good for showing a game on your game's device. And another thing to mention about this device is the root file system is read-only, or immutable if you want to show off. And that means you, you can't install any other apps by default, you can't, but you also can't break it. It's very easily hackable, you can turn that off, but it's designed as a consumer device. So why am I talking about this at a KDE conference? Because of the next slide. Use your deck as a PC, because it is one. And what Valve are providing at a very minimal environment isn't enough to use it as a PC to act as a PC, supporting multiple monitors and doing all this setup involved in that, you know, drag windows about, sort out printer drivers, which are a pain, and all of these complicated things you can't build very quickly. It's the sort of thing that takes 22 years to build, which is what we've been doing. So it took a very smart decision, stick KD on the device. And that was Val's vision. You've got your deck, you can use it as a PC. And that saves you buying another device, buying another PC, and you're hooked into your one device, it does many more things, and hooks you into that one market store, which is where they gain from it. And that's our opportunity to shine. It's where we come into our own element, because they want a desktop, that's what we provide. So how does KDE on your device work? Hidden away in the power menu, press a button called switch to desktop, as highlighted by the yellow arrow instead of the red label. Um, and you get a full desktop experience. If you want to know what Plasma looks like on a Steam Deck, just open your own laptop, because it's the same, but slightly smaller. And out of the box, they're not just shipping Plasma, they're also shipping a handful of the KDE applications, Dolphin, Arc, Gwenview, but not that many. But we have Discover. And even though some of the root file system is read-only, you can still add with flat packs applications into your own home directory. So Discover is available in desktop mode, and any app available on FlatHub can be easily downloaded and installed. And quite an interesting twist on this is once the application is downloaded and installed, you can then load them from that very fast single-user game scope mode. So you can grab the app here and still not have to go to your desktop when you want to use that one app. You've got your desktop mode when you need something very powerful. So we talked about how you can plug it in and use it as a PC, but it's also a portable device. And you can use it as a portable device. You can run Plasma without plugging in an external monitor and a mouse and a keyboard. In fact, you can see it here. I'll just go to a more overhead screenshot so you can see what it looks like, and we're trying to provide that full desktop experience. 
The start menu looks the same. Dolphin is a window you can drag it around and you can interact exactly as you would. And it's quite an interesting device. It's very unique compared to any other device we've seen before because working from Plasma, because you have a touch screen, so mouse input is sorted. But you have a trackpad, so mouse input is sorted. There's another trackpad, so mouse input is sorted. And you've got a joystick, which you can use to control your mouse. So mouse input is sorted. Um, there's also an accelerometer in here, and many people on the internet, a few social media people said, well, you can hook this up to control your mouse. So pretty well covered for mice. But keyboard is still lacking. So we do have a virtual keyboard option. Um, and you press a key combination, it invokes. So it's an interesting device, because it's not something you see in any other, many other situations of that many mice, no keyboard. So how are people using the deck? The Steam Deck's been shipping for a couple of months now. And we've seen it used in ways maybe not as expected. So we're seeing people boot into, a desk, into the desktop mode to configure that gaming mode. A go in, install some emulators, which is a small enough task that you can do with just a mouse and a virtual keyboard. And do your mods. You can customize your boot splash. You can modify a few files. And doing mods and customization. And they're using a file manager as a way of tweaking. Another thing we saw was people using a desktop mode to fulfill missing functionality of the game scope mode. Because on day zero of launch, there were things missing. There was complicated Wi-Fi. I mean, when Valve were making it, they didn't think about some radius server where you need to download a file in advance and ship it in a folder. But the support forums had an easy answer. Switch to desktop mode, do all of this, and it's all network manager on this stack, it's all shared. And then you can go back. So it was being used as a crux. People with Bluetooth headphones, you need to select the right codec so it's not quite as good. Valve don't necessarily need it in their UI. It keeps it nice and simple. But there's an option. So we're filling, fulfilling that gap of just filling in these niche requirements. Arguably, you could call it missing functionality. But we're able to sort of drill down into the details. But also, bigger features, like if you want to record your screen while you're sharing a game and streaming, because that's what people are doing nowadays. Or if you're taking your screenshots and you want to copy it to an SD card or upload it to, an, to your cloud, you can't really do that in the gaming mode, but you've got a full desktop experience with you already. You don't have to go home and plug it in. And then things get even more creative. So I've taken some photos from social media, and this guy plugging in some GNU radio. I never understand GNU radio, but it's got cool plots, and they're always at FOSDEM. And he's probably doing something illegal. And <laughs> but and people going around on social media saying, well, I've got my deck. It's easy to use as a PC, but it's not as big and bulky as a laptop, but more flexible to use than a phone. I don't think you, you struggle to do this sort of thing on a phone without a lot of work, maybe on the Plasma Mobile. But even there, you don't have as many mice. So. <laughs> It's really coming into its own, as its own form factor in ways that we weren't seeing. And then this guy, a genuine post from social media uh, a couple of days ago. I went to a conference but forgot my laptop. So I'm using my Steam Deck. And he had it with him, probably playing games when he should have been concentrating. But then I opened up a text editor, word processor, and boom, made it work. And I'm using my Steam Deck to present. So therefore, I win in your face, guy on Reddit. But we're seeing it used in these sort of creative ways. But we're also seeing people using it properly, as expected. Um, again, going to social media posts. Anyone else using your deck as a desktop? And if you look for your comments, there's enough people saying, yeah, it works great. And one thing I think I found interesting is we've had KD on laptops and such in the past. But in a laptop, there's an expectation, I think we see, of if you've got a laptop, it must behave identical to Windows if you're a new user or it's rubbish. And people have that expectation. But when things are slightly different, even when you're plugging in a mouse and keyboard, because they weren't really expecting a desktop when they set out to buy it, 
it's a value on. They're happy, they're happy with it. They're happy to experiment that little bit more and go, oh, it may be different, but I like it, it's different. And they're uh, pleased with that. So this was a quote from our contacts at Valve. Desktop mode has been used a lot more than we expected. <laughs> I'm gonna skip ahead, for the, and this is all done to hard work of Ed Woman Crady, and you should all be proud. You've wasted your clap. Don't do it again. <laughs> right, that's enough because this talk is all about me <laughs> and my team and what we've been working on. So that's a device. But how did we get there? So Blue Systems were contacted by Valve. We got in touch. Uh, we knew they wanted to do something with Plasma. And we also get some assistance from Enioka later on in this journey to work on very specific, specific areas of plasma, places where Valve has said, oh, I think we can do this a little bit better. Because that's their prerogative. That's what um, they should have as um, users. I mean, they're users. They're, it's what they're shipping to clients. So when they contacted us, we didn't know about the Steam Deck. We weren't hired for that. It was a secret. I assume they knew. I don't know, don't know if they knew. Um, but they gave some work saying, we're going to do something with Plasma. So we started off and mostly didn't do many Steam Deck specific tasks, partly because they had this vision of using it as a, as a desktop. But that didn't matter because Valve cared about building an ecosystem regardless. So it was a phrase they constantly repeat, build an ecosystem, because it's in their interest for Linux to get better. On Linux, they are the store where you get games, and they're a place where, if you want to sell a game, Valve are providing an added value, which you don't get in many other stores. So it makes sense, it's a good partnership. So to get away from those other stores that Alice was talking about on, on Windows and Android and OS X, rather than competing, it's in their interest for a new market to thrive, which means Plasma and GNOME and everyone, getting those more users. So they really care about, about that. So we did get some inklings about the Steam Deck, because occasionally they would say, oh, is it touching for in this application? And we'd say, oh, is that something you want us to look into? And then they'd scurry away and say, no. <laughs> so, uh, but obviously at some point we knew. So what have we been doing for Valve? Well, one of the earlier tasks was improving at resource management, resource visualization. So as a network graph, some case this guard got added first. And we end up building a whole new monitor with GPU information and the GPU inf memory use and GPU because that's what the gamers sort of it are more interested in. And we had a new system monitor with desktop widgets that's been talked about in a previous academy. And all of these bullet points you could do half an hour talks on. I won't because I'll ruin tennis schedule. Another big part, system settings, and this is the work from Enioka, and if you have any questions, please go to Kevin. I'm sure he'll be really pleased to hear about him. Highlight change settings. System settings is always a very difficult topic. You open it up and it's settings everywhere, and you change something, something stops working, you don't know what is changed. How do you go about it? How do you easily go about it and fix that? And you've probably all seen in Plasma, two releases ago, we, there's a button added in system settings. You press it, and then you can see which settings have you changed from the default. Um, and the default provided by a look and feel, and the default provided by a system. There's always different layers that happen. And with that, we also found that revert to default button, that's in every KCM. It didn't work in so many cases, because it's the sort of thing where a developer writes once, goes, that works. And then somebody comes along and goes, I'm going to add a new config option. But do they think about testing that button? Not really. So you get this feature creep that happens. So yeah, going through every module and not just fixing it, but creating an infrastructure that does it automatically. And it's amazing. A more left field uh, thing thrown from them is they wanted a firewall because they knew you'd have people coming in from Windows and that's the expectation. It should be a firewall, there should be a way to configure it. 
and they funded that, they shipped that, and we have, one thing that we've seen is Valve would suggest something, and I'd be skeptical, but I'm a good contractor, so I do it anyway. And then, the social media would come up, and everyone, would, when you do your release notes for Plasma, people would say, oh, that's a really good idea. I'm really good with that. So do tend to have their finger on the pulse of what's actually needed. And we also added this landing page, system settings, if you want to find one of the few things you're going to change a lot, light theme, dark theme, that sort of thing. So on the front page, click it, move on. Another massive topic, power profiles. Steam Deck from battery life, but also laptops on battery. These sort of things matter. And there's a lot of advances happening in the kernel space. And we weren't really utilizing it in the desktop space. And some work was happening in this free desktop world, but it wasn't really ready for production. It wasn't really ready for us to use for our needs. And we still needed to integrate it into the So we've added support for power profile switching. If your kernel supports it, you'll see it in the battery monitor. You can say you want performance profile or battery saving, which I hope my Steam Deck's on right now, so I don't lose halfway through the slides. And we did a lot of work upstream in all of that as well. Another big aspect with power and resource management is putting all the applications into different seed groups, which, again, I talked about at a previous academy, but now we know it's Valve funded. And making our application, foreground applications run a bit faster. But it wasn't just in Plasma. Uh, there's a few cases where generally the community does a great job of, uh, of all the applications, and there's some applications which are essential, and there's some which are more f uh, fringe use, use cases. And we had the job of going over a couple of these core applications and just giving them a quick cleanup. Gwenview was amazing. Over time, I think there had been a drop in commits, and some new behavioral changes had come in as standards. So it just needed that little bit of cleanup, and that's what we've discussed of. Let's give it, I shouldn't have used the word overhaul. It wasn't an overhaul, it was just a visual refresh of let's go a certain amount of time, see how much we can polish and sort out. And another thing in related to Gwenview, the file management wasn't quite there with Keo, it blocks a lot, particularly if you put a slow SD card in. Maybe now, I think, it might have been thinking about the Steam Deck when this request came in, or if you put a slow SD card, it blocks a lot. Now it doesn't. Now it's super fast. And another one on review right now, Spectacle. It's a good application. The functionality all works, but we can make it a bit more streamlined. The expectation has changed. What we've seen in other desktops have become this more integrated, smooth process. It's about our workflow. And we're like, well, we should have that. We should make sure our apps are up to date. And that's on review right now. So check it out. And hopefully we'll see that landing. But Valve weren't just thinking about end users on your device. They're also thinking about that developer experience. Because if you're trying to profile your game on the Steam Deck, you're going to be logging in. You're going to be running console. They probably know all of the commands. They're not in the same case as Thomas was talking about earlier. but. It's still it's reflowing and multi-line checkbox changes is just enough off that if you're not used to your Linux world, which some of these developers are not, there's some stuff that could be polished up. So they funded some console work. And what I think they were focusing on was the things that bothered them because they could relate to that. And what have we done in Plasma? Uh, we continued all of our startup improvements. Uh, startup is much, much faster than it was years ago. There's our systemd managed boot, which has helped make things so much more robust, particularly with other upstream changes that happened, because robustness is something I really care about. And microphone volume indicators, it's a very small thing compared to all of these other bullet points that are worthy of your own talks. But the backstory of how this came about is good. We were in a meeting, and somebody, who will remain nameless, didn't have a microphone set up properly, and it was embarrassing. <laughs> but it was a realization of, it's not your fault, whoever it may be. Uh, 
let's fix this. Let's put in some time and fix this sort of tiny paper cut. So that was something that came up from there. And we funded some of the work on QFUs when we thought it was going to stall. We took on that GSOC guy and let him finish that off. So I mentioned the only way to install applications is flat packs. And flat packs is great, but it's slightly more than just packaging your app. Packaging your app gets it on the store, but there are some nuances that don't quite work exactly the same as a native application. And they need to be taken care of. And it's not just inside the application, there are things missing at a very fundamental layer as well. So we sorted out the portal support for drag and drop outside a file system. So a flat pack might have a different knowledge of a file system compared to your space outside a flat pack. So if you pass in a path, that doesn't necessarily matter, match up. So we hooked all of that up with some portal magic. I think we were some of the first to actually make that work everywhere. And we had a KDE API for process spawning outside the sandbox because the flat pack hides user bin. So if you're Kate and you have plugins that try and execute the git command, it does nothing. And that was something I cared about. If, if we're in a position where a Kate developer say, we're not comfortable with our product on the flat pack because it makes our product look bad, that's a problem that needs fixing. And we need to take a step back and not just say, oh, Kate, it's your problem. We need to look at the underlying problems and fix all of that. And we did. And, <laughs> well, hopefully. Um, if people do have issues, please do let us know. So we had a KE API and KCore add-ons, and we did the work porting Kate to that. And we didn't want to push anyone. We sort of said, we've done your work. If you're comfortable with this being on the store, let's put it on the store. And that's all moving forward now. And that's going to be good because it's something I miss on a deck. You want that good text editor, even if you are using a virtual keyboard. And the portal is a moving target. And the way Flatpaks works is it's a packaging level system, but it's also a file protection system. It's trying to lock down and sandbox your application. And the more you sandbox, the more you need to poke holes in that sandbox to make things con continue to work. And that's where a portal comes in. And that's this constantly iterating target. Wayland. I know. Silence befells the room. Silence befells my tart slides while I have a drink. So there's a lot to do in Wayland. It, and so much so, I know we have two talks tomorrow. I'm not going to drill down into what we've been doing. But let us say it's a big topic. And the issues go beyond KDE. It's not a case of issues go beyond KDE. It's not just a case of us fixing a few things. It's what's going on here? Okay. <laughs> it's not just a case of us fixing it's stuff infrastructure throughout the stack. It's all of the clients and there's protocol missing. And I mean Valve Wayland works really well if you have a very simple app. Uh, is a window, it's all isolated, self-contained, and behaves the way a simple app works. But as soon as you have a virtual keyboard or a driver trying to replay events or absolute positioning, like a friends overlay where all your, see all your contacts that Valve has, or if you want to stream all your media to another device, which is a feature Valve has. And there's so many cases where Valve's own software wasn't really working with Wayland. So, they know X isn't the future, but Wayland still has gaps that need filling. And it's a massive long-term effort. And they've been funding that, but it also means they're interested in KDE for your long haul as well, because they know it's a big project. And we've done even more behind the scenes that I didn't bother writing into bullet points, because there's so many lots of little, little tiny things everywhere. So, some closing thoughts, wrapping it up. A big topic. Okay. Uh, why did Valve choose KDE? And have a moment to think about that, and I'll tell you my opinion, which is right, because I've got a microphone. <laughs> they chose it because they use it themselves, and they like it. 
It's a very simple concept. They use it and they like it. But there's also so much to read into that. If we're not targeting some hypothetical user, and I think that's something it's easy to get into that mindset of, oh, what if a user does this? What if a user does that? And I think it's very clear from all your conversations, they focus on what they like. And they took that story of, well, my opinion probably reflects a lot of people. I'm not that weird. And they focus on that. And it's also quite interesting that Valve didn't say, see this product and go, well, what can we shape it into? They were like, we're happy with this. This is what we want. And I think there's also a tendency to, to look at some other products that are happening and going, oh, we need to pivot into this space. We need to pivot into that space. And sometimes you need to look inside and go, well, actually, what's working well? And in many ways, Plasma right now and the KDE stack and all the applications is actually working well. And we sh should lean into that. So it's an exciting time. I think it's safe to say this is Plasma's biggest adoption onto mainstream hardware that ships out the box. I mean, I know it's had other products in the fast, past. The thing that I like most about this is a lot of the times we see people using Linux because they're targeting for cheap. And when they use Linux because they're targeting for cheap, that shows in all other aspects of, of what goes to market. But that's not a case of Valve. They're not using Plasma because it's cheap, they're using it because they can control the store. And therefore, they're happy to put it on a high-end device. They're using it, well, they're using it because they like it. So, this is Valve. I'm not sure if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, would I be on stage talking about Valve funding a device, running Plasma is being shipped to a lot of people? I, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd laugh at you. And I would have been wrong. So who's next? Is it going to be Dell? Is it going to be HP? Alice said, you're not going to see Plasma on helicopters? Or well, three years from now, if I'm floating on this stage, you'll look like an idiot. And I'm going to look really cool. Or is it going to be something else unusual? Like a car? Mental. So we'll see. And if we can prove ourselves in the marketplace with one big vendor, Hopefully others will notice. And where we're at now with Plasma on a deck isn't where Plasma's going to continue being on a deck. We're, we're continuing to iterate on it. The community is continuing to iterate on Plasma upstream. We're changing this. We are going to make some awesome software that's being exposed to lots of awesome people. And next year, maybe we'll be in a position to stand on a hill with a flag looking successful. Montserrat, maybe. So, any questions? Also, how long have I got left? We have about 10 minutes left. Ah, oh, perfect. Now so, uh, I'll be doing questions from the audience and online as well. I'll start with the online ones and then I'll... Sure. Go back and forth. So the first one from uh, Nicholas. Who do I need to bribe or convince to pre-install KD Connect on the Steam Deck? No one. We'll see what happens. Um, in terms of default packages, that's something outside our control. It's something, because we can make recommendations, we've got a good partnership. We'll see what happens. I would also suggest you check out the beta options in the Steam Deck and see what you see in main instead of release. Um, you said that uh, this, the Steam Deck has been sold to, or sold or distributed to many, many people. Do we know how many? I do. I don't know if it's public. Can you ask? If they can tell uh, so I do know. Uh, Okay. What? Okay, good. Okay, I can, I can tell you that. Um, they have crossed over a million, and they're still processing the back orders, and once they're done with the back orders, we'll, um, we're in, that's still going on. So once they process the back orders, then they expect another surge of sales, because then it's going to be available in store. 
and that's going to be a huge boost. We're also seeing a dock, which is not this one. Uh, a dock being announced. Oh, the screen flickered if I do it. Uh, it's also announced a dock. Sorry, it's also announced a dock that's coming soon, and I think that's really going to boost the plasma on the deck um, usage, because then it's a bit easier to plug it into a mouse keyboard. We don't need a mouse uh, keyboard and monitor, and rather than using unofficial docks, so it works a little bit better. Uh, next question comes from Andreas. Uh, Valve seems somewhat slow with updating Plasma on the deck, even in the beta channels. Do you have any insight is, uh, in the reasons for that? Say again, sorry? Uh, the Plasma is old on the Steam Deck. Yes. When update? Um, <laughs> what happened? So it's not our fault. Um, it's not, so when they have the operating system, we talked about how it's immutable. They've got this big updates that they take um, atomically. And that's a big process. They, after our first deck, our first shipment, they were like, we've got this, let's play safe. And then let's work where we're going afterwards. So I think it's just playing safe for now. There are, we will see updates. We will see updates while it's back. Okay, the, the deck itself works well for, for games. Uh -huh. And uh, it works well if you connect it to a TV and uh, a keyboard and a mouse. Yep. But if you try to use it uh, as a desktop, uh, the desktop version, on the deck, deck itself, it's breaks up. It doesn't really work very well because the mouse is uh, only on the right side. For example, uh -huh. I'm, I'm left-handed. Well, okay, so I can do a live demo. I'm not going to do a live demo because I'm not an idiot. Um, but if you go to your Steam settings, you'll see how much control you've got because one thing Valve do is settings. So on this window here, um, which, oh, I see what someone was saying about your mouse being difficult. Uh, if we can find, oh, okay. There is a setting. I will show you uh, and you can configure every aspect of it. You can even switch to touchpad. You can change the sensitivity. Okay. It's got an intense amount of control. And that's all being done at the Valve layer. So you probably looked in system settings. Arguably, that's not as streamlined as it could be, but is Valve providing that translation from all of these buttons to mouse keyboard events? And therefore, it's hooked into their UI. So once you find it, it's the same as the one we use to configure it on games. And it's very, very powerful. And there's some community templates on there as well. OK, thanks. Okay, another question from the online audience. How does one backup data from the Steam Deck? Did Valve ask for a nice backup and restore UI on the device? There's not something they've asked for, um, but you have a file manager. So I think that's as much a case of, you can use a deck as a, a deck, a desktop mode as a way to do something. You might need to find that wiki page on, or, on, on GitHub where someone says, these are where all your files are. And we can also use other apps on top. There are existing backup restore applications. Grab one from Flatpak, it will probably work if you get your directory synced up. So I think it's an interesting question. It could be an interesting avenue. I talked about how Plasmas and what we're doing is not fixed. They're going to continue iterating over time. So who knows what your future brings? I've been helicopters. Uh, Valve used the desktop edition there was an option to use Plasma Mobile Edition for the UI, yep. which would be a better option, but there would be something needed extra on top. So was there any uh, like talk about this where there was a choice? So we certainly made them aware of what we had in Plasma Mobile, because I mean, we work on Plasma Mobile. I know some, some of the people work on this team that kicked off a lot of the Plasma Mobile stuff. So, we were aware, we certainly uh, saw things as a suggestion, but I think it's also, it's not a mobile device because, I mean, we, we, we've run it locally, but I find a touchpad very difficult to use because unless you have very long fingers, um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's unique. Um, so I think it was very important for them to sell it as, and market as this is a desktop mode because if you want that full window experience, that's what your mode they provide us for. 
So I think it's about reducing that overlap and provide something new, which is why I didn't go for that. But the Plasma Mobile applications, that all translates. So we've got Discover out of box. It's got a relatively small screen. Your convergence, your convergence is convergence. It doesn't matter if it's a small screen, a big screen or somewhere slightly in the middle. It sort of just works. And we are seeing that work from Plasma Mobile really come into play there. So I think there's a lot of scope for applications to, to shine there and be something that deck users say, oh, install this app. Happen to come from Plasma Mobile to them, this is a standalone app, doesn't really matter, and have that available. What were the motivations for Valve using its own immutability solution? Um, I don't know outside of the stack because, well, I mean, we focus on Plasma because that's our, our, our level. I, th I, th I think you're right that other things exist now. It's, the whole stock is similar-ish with Fedora Silver Blue, that sort of thing. But they also need to retain, they, they would have started this years ago, what existed at the time when they did it, that's up to them. So I'm afraid I can't answer. Can you go back to the slide with the uh, deck? Um, I'll close LibreOffice, but yeah, sure. Do. <laughs> Ruining uh, uh, uh. my life. I don't really have any question. I was I just want to take the picture and I missed the chance. Oh, yeah. I see. Do you want me to stand? I'm going to stand under it. I mean, you could also look at take a photo of this and just zoom in a bit closer. Okay. <laughs> she only has to say not life science. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, not, that, not even that long ago, KDE still had the reputation of being a heavyweight uh, resource hog. And, I mean, it has gone down with Plasma 5, uh -huh. but has the fact that we are running um, Plasma 5 on a device that has to be extremely efficient um, improved that... Um, has there been like specific feedback coming that, oh, wow, this is now actually fast? Um, so I, I don't think, well, there's a, few, there's a few things to drill into there. Firstly, this is as powerful as my laptop, certainly in terms of how quickly it can compile Quinn. Um, it batches is a bit smaller, but it lasts quite a long time. And I don't think we've hit, we certainly haven't hit any issues, and I don't, we've never been that worried about any issues. But as to whether your perception has changed, I don't know. I don't think... It's not something I saw a lot of concern about because they're marketing it as it's a desktop, you can use it to PC. I don't think people were worried about thinking of it as an embedded device. But hope, hopefully we've improved, we've fixed a couple of people's minds on the internet. That's all the time we had for questions. Thank you very much, David.